What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. Drill cone, drill rocket is back, and you can see there we can just drop off the good A's. Now we have it automatically set up to pick up the goods, right? So just telling it to drop the goods from the cargo bay. Empty storage. We'll drop them on the floor and then immediately get picked up by our auto sweeper system that we have in place, which will be wonderful. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe and like. It really helps the channel. Thank you very much. Right, so we did get a lot of slime, algae and stuff. Now, the algae, I'm not really sure we're going to use or we're going to, we need to use because in terms of oxygen, we're certainly not using it for that. Slime definitely is a valuable resource, which is funny, actually, because, you know, most times you, you hate the stuff because it causes a mess and... Um, slime lung but as you can see there getting picked up and going along the chain across the top there and then it will go to the final one which is in the little surface base and then all the way back into the base and then eventually the slime will get sorted into the sealed canisters that are stuck below where the storage bay is and then it won't get sublimated I believe is the word where the solid turns into a gas or gases out the polluted oxygen anyway on you can see the bus is there yes the bus is there and we're now telling it to go home this was at the end of the last episode you saw me preparing this it has obviously arrived now it's not too far between the two asteroids and just selecting all five not you you're not there all five duplicates that are on the planet yes there's one extra because i needed a, a pilot to bring the rocket here remember so the original pilot plus the four superheroes from uh, this asteroid are now finally going home. Hopefully never to have to come back here again. Now I didn't think about it when I was doing it, but I might actually look at... We do have some skins for the schnazzy suits. Also, I can make the schnazzy suits. So I may look to figure out the four guys that were living on this asteroid... And give them an appropriate outfit to remember them, especially Ben He, right? We've had discussions with Ben He many times before where he's nearly died on two occasions. And there we go. Bye bye, asteroid number two, has, as you have been so named, because I really don't want to try and say whatever that says. Uh, apparently, someone's injured. Oh, stinky. There's Ben He. OG of the ship. There is five of them. There is only four beds and four, uh, what they're called, tables and chairs, but never mind. Not much food, but it's going to take like a quarter of a cycle to actually get home, so not a problem. Now, this drill ship's not going to go anywhere else because actually I want to upgrade it. The next time it goes out, it will be getting one of the resources that we desperately need, and I haven't actually found any yet. But also, it needs upgrading to the new engine as well. As you can see, that is still the natural gas engine, which was our best up until this point. But we are close now to having the large petroleum engines. So, yeah, Stinky you saw was injured when he got on the shuttle. He doesn't seem to have an Atmo suit. I've got no idea where the Atmo suit of his went. You can see how slow he's going. Now, the logic here is that he looks like he's broke his arm, but he's walking very slow. He also managed to get hit by, I think, two meteors in the pro... Yeah, that's... Suffice to say, we know what's happening here, right? Unfortunately, it's inevitable. There is no way he is going to make it up that ladder, down the ladder, across into that chamber and somewhere safe before. Now, I'm not sure how easy it would have been. I mean, I could have... Any of those people that are around him, I could have dropped their Atmos suit, like I just did, and then said, dude, wear it. But, yeah, the auto cleanup system stole it. So, <laughs> that didn't work either. And the Michi is there coming in and wrecking my Radbolt collection. You can see there is a Radbolt uh, research, applied science research bay on top of there as well. Because I was going to try and do something fancy. But then realised that this guy was indeed dying. And now officially we can say... Dead. 
Rip Stinky. I'm pretty sure Stinky always dies, right? Let me know in the comments. If you've watched any of my other two seasons, I'm pretty sure there is episodes that say Rip Stinky. I'm not going to do that again. Uh, but either Stinky is very unlucky or yeah, I'll let you fill in the blank there. Or he just like I don't know. I honestly don't know. But yeah, it, it, Stinky definitely does die a lot. Moving on. There's nothing I could have done about that, right? Um, the, maybe I could have turned off the collectors to stop it picking up the Atmos suit and giving one of them. Probably I should have done. I don't know. The fact that his suit was gone anyway, which was inside the rocket, and obviously it wouldn't be a sweeper in there because they don't go inside the actual capsules. So, or it was a bug. I'm not entirely sure. As it happens though, losing a duplicate is better for FPS. And I can always print a new one. This isn't one of them playthroughs where I'm going to go, oh, it's 50 people and everyone has to has to survive to the end. Which likely will be season 4. Uh, and for those of you that are watching now, please do let me know what you'd like to see in the next season of this. I've had my eye, uh, eyes on a... You start with a lot more people than you're supposed to, say 50, um, and then you have to survive a certain amount of cycles with those same people. Instead of playing it to the game where you just fill up, you take over this asteroid, you then go to space, get all your resources, go to the temporal shift. I'd like a challenge where I've got too many people to start with, so farming will be critical at the beginning. Um, I suppose digging there will be quite insane with... 50 people to start with. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts. For now, though, I think Season 4 will be something along them lines, unless someone suggests a better, different option. Research there on that large engine and the chlorine tank is so close now. Just a few more rad bolts and a few more researchers, and we will indeed unlock the super engine that we've been trying to get for a while now it's basically holding me back for any more rockets i'm not building any more now until we've got that engine um because the 35 tile height is very significant and allows us to do much more travel much further and bring back much better goodies this bus has it landed i didn't really pay attention yeah it's landed so the bus has landed, which means all of those are now back at asteroid number one, a.k.a. home. Just see down there in the bottom left-hand corner, I've got a broken broken transport pipe connector. I don't know how that's happened, unless that's heat or cold that's done it. I'm not sure. Likely heat from a launching rocket. But yep, the drill cone there being deleted, dismantled immediately. Because the next version, of course, is going to be on the large petroleum rocket. Really annoying, though. When you say delete it all, they delete one thing, and then it resets. Really annoying. And with that rocket platform free, we can land the two orbital surveyors as well, and bring in yet another couple of hundred data banks for us. Same principle as always. They'll land, we'll drop off the data banks, the guys can refresh, the food can be restocked if required. Water top top, oxygen top top. Polluted water can be drained out if I have that set up. And the carbon dioxide too. And then send them straight back up into orbit. Rinse and repeat for more data banks. And their job really, I mean you can see they're 335 this time. Massive amounts there. Huge, huge improvement. Another 319 there. So another 600 plus data banks coming in for us. Chugging through that research nicely. Uh, at some point... I am going to do the math though because I feel like we might have enough or very close to having enough because the data bank cost doesn't really go up much. It's the applied science, which is the Radbolt one that goes up significantly for the higher end. This one and then the last engine one, the high cryogenic hydrogen engine, requires about 450. The other researchers we haven't done yet that we need to get to um, don't actually need much of those at all. A lot of food there, and I'm a bit confused as to why they're not being picked up. Well, it's obvious. It's because the crate chest things, they don't hold food, right? 
So the food that's been dropped by the drill rocket uh, will have to be manually sorted. I can put some food canisters down and do the same principle, but I'm just not. I I'm not. They'll move it. They'll shift it. It's fine. Thank you for the comment about the storage. And yes, I've seen it now and I'm using it and it is fabulous. The Red Bolt Chamber allows you to store 1,000 Red Bolts. And I'm assuming you can link them up, right? There's no reason why you can't. Um, so that means that we can get a backup for that and in turn doing the research as well. But more importantly, actually, for that, the interplanetary uh, sender that allows us to basically fill up one of these Red Bolt Chambers with Red Bolts. And then we can send a crap ton of resources all at once. So I'm just doing this little setup and trying it out here. It's probably not the best place to do it in the uh, openness of space. But there is free radiation up there, isn't there? So why wouldn't you? And that will hopefully help push us through that final stage of about 30 applied science for the petroleum rocket. So we're almost done. Now I am using the collectors from the original down and off the screen down to the bottom left there where the interplanetary thing is because that is stopped simply because I'm not actually sending anything anywhere. So instead of wasting the time there, I'm using reflectors to send them red bolts up to this system. They will go into the red bolt chamber and then be sent, as you can see there, into the research machine when needed. Now there is a bit of poking around and jiggery pokery as you call it with this because it does fire quite fast you can tell it how many rad bolts to fire out i've actually lowered the number for me now at the minute 20 is the best number it fires 20 uh, rad bolts as a burst and the idea is because of how far things are away you need to give it time to update before it wastes your rad bolts yeah so that's how i'm going to set it up uh, remember that the research thing holds a maximum of 100. So that's five pulses. The interplanetary transporter holds 200, so 10. Again, you have to use a knock gate as always. The knock gate is simply telling the Radbot chamber to not send anything when the research bench is full. As soon as the research is completed, that empties that out sends a signal over and then any that are remaining will be sent it's working nicely and it's definitely better as a solution what i need now is the actual creation of the rad bolts to be significantly increased now you can do that with research there is a machine giant machine though it is where you put uranium or i think it's enriched uranium actually uh, you can do it like that but on a better note and a, and a, and a more important note we, we've done it right there it is that is the petroleum, large petroleum engine. Now, a lot of piping we need to do here, and I will pre-warn you that it's going to be a bit complex, and I will have to, again, off-camera, uh, do a bit of moving about, so I'm not boring you with that. Basically, 35 tiles uh, is too many for where I've built the base, the top. I'm too close to the top, so I'm going to have to bring my whole launching platform down i was going to do that if you remember where i wanted to make like a silo type thing well i don't have a choice because 35 tiles from this platform here is actually outside of the real realm of where you're allowed to build so we will i will find that out as i go but for now you can see petroleum straight for the fairer again we can't make the upgraded larger one yet because we need that fancy alloy uh, I'm a bit annoyed by that because I'm still none the wiser as to how far I am away from it and I wanted larger capsules a long time ago. Um, but for them to actually survive with the oxygen, water and food that I'm putting in, it's more than enough. To be honest, to go as far as I wanted to go with a rocket, I can't seem to get enough fuel and oxidizer on the rocket to do that. So There's your large fuel tank. So a large fuel tank, a large oxidizer tank. Uh, realistically, though, you need two fuel tanks. And that's two large fuel tanks. Two large oxidizer tanks. But then you have no space left. So that's why I'm interested in seeing how good and efficient the liquid oxidizers are. Of course, the interior is, as always, 
Uh, that mess hall will become a great hall when I open that door. It's the size that's restricting it. Luxury bedroom and a bathroom. Um, this is obviously Rocket. is called Long Range 1. Again, original names. Why not? Uh, these... And there we go. That should be a great hole now. No, it's still a mess hole for now because we need... What do we need? Oh, the telephone, I think, for the recreation. So we need to get a recreation in there and uh, that should be a great hole, which is plus, plus six on the mood. Using freezers now instead of refrigerators so that the food just doesn't decay. Yes, it requires an extra two tiles. It's, it's two by two instead of one by two. Um, but to be honest, it, we st it still works. We still get the great hole, and that is, for me anyway, a much, much more important factor. Then, no matter how long they're in space for, the food will never decay. We'll not be wasting any food, that's for sure. They've got the luxury of the bathroom. They've got the luxury of the fancy bed. And, of course, I'm using this skin there for the ship. And then the telephone will go in there to make it a great hole, and we're good to go. Again, plus 10 there for morale based on the buildings. Uh, the phone itself will give a couple as well, two morale. So that's plus 12. Uh, and then if there is any nice food in there, that'll also give them an additional boost. But I I'll be honest, I'm being a bit lazy with that at the minute. So just popping over to Chilna. Chilina. I did say I'll start using the names after Asteroids 1 and 2, or Home and 2, Asteroid 2, anyway. So, Chilna, this is the Ice Asteroid. This is a far-out asteroid that we're going to try and use to hopefully set up the basics around a satellite. I don't know why I keep saying satellite. Telescope. Of course, it's only going to be the low-end one. Very unlikely we're going to use the enclosed one because oxygen is a pain in the backside to sort out. Um, and we'll be using this for trying to uncover a bit more of our galaxy. I did obviously say previously, I think it was the episode before, that there is the rocket capsule. But the research is so far away, I'm just going to try and see how bad this is. I'd already put the rocket platform down, if you remember, on a previous mission. So why not use it? This guy just holding the breath, Rowan holding the breath. The resources are with them. We can send over whatever's needed or missing. You can see there's plenty of um, metal already here and some capsules that can be opened. So we just need to get that built. A bit of power which we can steal from the rocket. Remember the rocket has its own battery and generation. So if you wire into that, you can use it. You don't have to put a power station down and batteries and all that crap. Get in there slowly but surely. There are minimum resources. So I'm going to have to start breaking up the ladders, which you can see is why I'm deconstructing them. Do a ladder, a gap, a ladder, a gap, a ladder, a gap. Because there's not enough resources to actually build the full ladder out there. All I need to do now is get them last two bits of uh, power connected to the ship. Which I obviously need to get the ladder up a bit. And then over there you can see to the, um, the telescope. And, I mean, it just looked like a satellite. It's why I keep saying satellite. Anyway. And then the Rowan has the skill. We'll obviously do that. As soon as it says all i can't remember what it actually says exactly now but something like all oh, scan complete or something like that then it's done and we can just leave and hopefully we'll uncover something useful if not it doesn't matter we've got to uncover it all anyway because we need the resources and we're looking for the temporal shift so we can quote unquote win the game Back home, I'm currently setting up another couple of rockets. I'm trying to keep all of the rockets the same so that the setups will be the same. The piping, the oxygen fuel, etc. will be the same and they are as efficient as they can be. I haven't found a way yet where I can build a rocket and then basically blueprint it and put it down. It doesn't seem to work. Uh, if you know how to do that, let me know if it's possible, that is. I mean, it's not too difficult adding like five or six capsules, right? But... As you can see, I'm just throwing together these two, and I'll make one and then add the other one to the other side and get them to build it. The interiors need to be built as well on the capsules, the fearers, uh, but they'll also be identical. As far as I'm aware, I'm nowhere near the uh, Neutronium alloy, so I'm not even considering about getting the new ones in there yet. There is also, I believe, a nose cone that's quite impressive that you can use that's got built-in giblets that's good, but also needs that same alloy. So for now, I'm just going to see what we can actually achieve with what we've got and how far that can go. Um, and then from there, I'll establish what I want to do next. 
And here we go again. So building out the capsule. Now that's wrong. I need to raise up that bottom layer ever so slightly. That's better. Um, and same as before. Now that bottom where the um, actual rocket controller thing is needs to have no door there. You can get it with a mess hall and do it that way. It works fine. But to get the great mess hall, which is the instead of two morale, you get six, which is huge. Um, it needs more space, otherwise it's too small. So you will have to open that door up and give that space in. Luckily, the actual rocket controller doesn't count as an industrial building, so it doesn't stop it working. But it needs to have uh, a fancy decor item, which is your carved pillars, and a recreational item, which the smallest one I found is the phone thing. Party line. And although you don't need to do any more than that, I do over-decorate them. Just as much as I can fit in, I cram it in there just to make it look nice. That's just aesthetics to me. It, it, I'm assuming it helps with the morale, but at some point, this, um, the decor value can't go above 300 anyway. So, And making the ho every single capsule have diamond wallpaper kind of supersedes that limit every time. Each one of these shuttles needs to be done manually. Uh, I do find out a bit later on, and I know how to use the blueprint and make it work. Effectively, I think it was kind of working, but it, when I was using the... So when you click the use blueprint button, and it looks like half the stuff is missing, if you actually click it down, it still puts it down. So as long as you know where and what it should be you're good to go now you can see all three of these rockets and yes i did a third one as well at the top i am now building the chromographic station i can't remember what it's called but that is your telescope or what i kept calling them satellites as the the shuttle flies through space it will be uncovering tiles within i think five um, tiles of it so if you just fly it out to somewhere where you haven't uncovered and leave it there for a few cycles, it will slowly uncover that area. And the idea here is I've got three. So I'm going to send them out to three locations that I haven't uncovered yet and let them do their thing. That has got to be better than the original option, right? And it is. I know it is. I've already done it. It works. It's slower in terms of uncovering areas. It's slower than the person sat on the machine. Um, but it's safer and it's easier so i'm not gonna argue with that now i need more oxygen so i need to get this oxygen that's backed up for the atmos suits we're making so much now we're not struggling the base as well um there is a second line there you can see is stagnant so if i connect that there to this left line this oxygen that there that was going to the left off the screen is the only oxygen line we have feeding the rockets and we now have three rockets all of which need to be fully filled with oxygen so there you go just connect them to still gonna take a while really you should probably have a line per rocket but it's not very often they're going to be needed to filled up filled up from zero right um you'll find that once you've done it once you only then need to just take out any there we go lovely jubbly of course it doesn't put in the seat the not the seat the toilet but it's better than nothing. It really is better than nothing. And leave them to it now. You get a lot of warnings coming up that they can't build it. That the helmet thing. That helmet thing is because there's no duplicates in that area. Not because they can't do it. But anyway, we are over time now. So I'll let them finish this off. And we'll try them out in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Don't forget to subscribe and like. It really helps me out. Again, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.